Hello again, listeners. Welcome back to the Meaning and Code podcast, season two, episode two. What, what? I'm, <laughs> I'm your host, Lily. I'm here with my co-host, Bennett. Hello, 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 hello. hello, hello. How you doing today, Bennett? Doing all right. I'm doing pretty good. Um, yeah, it feels like the bitter chill of winter last week is like lessened this week a little bit, nice. um, and I'm a- appreciating that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, same here. New York finally um, broke its, it was like a 701 day streak of no um, measurable snow. Oh, God. Yeah, we didn't have, we didn't have yeah. measurable in years. Yeah. Um, and we, we got like two days of it. That's Very fun. exciting. <laughs> yep. That's good. It's good right when it falls in New York. And yep. then the next day, it is disgusting. disgusting. Absolutely <laughs> disgusting. And you realize how much smoke and grit and whatever is being spewed all over the place everywhere. But yeah. the day it falls, New York is magical. <laughs> Truly. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. Um, wonderful. Have you have you done anything fun with that warmth this week or have you, have you um, any plans? Well, no, because it's also rainy. It's warm and rainy. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. It's not like super um, crazy. But uh, speaking of the winter um, yes. and warmth and things, but I, well, okay. So things are not known to grow in the winter, except for um, we grow these every year in the winter. Some people might oh recognize gosh. them. These are called paper whites and they're bulbs. You can grow other types of bulbs in the winter too. Um, oh, but, for the uh, listener who's not, who doesn't have the visual aspect, Bennett just grabbed a small pot from the side of where he was sitting with like gigantic uh, stems coming out of them. Yeah, exactly. So I've got a pot, it's got water in it. You can't see the water, <laughs> Lily, but there's water oh. in the pot. Um, and then uh, the bulbs are sitting up on just like a, a little prop. And then there's some mm-hmm. bulbs in the bottom of the pot and the bulbs have started growing. They have these big shoots and stems go all the way up and up at the top um you can see these buds there's buds at the top of the of the stems um and paper whites are a type of daffodil a type of narcissus um oh. so they're gonna bloom and i would show you paper whites that are blooming but i'd have to go halfway across the room um they bloom beautifully and they smell terrible but oh, they no. bloom beautifully oh, no. all so right that's been so fun. We're, watching we're the paper whites protected. grow in the middle of january is uh really nice Lovely. Yeah. And maybe it's good that we can only see them through the screen and not yeah. get the, the smell aspect. It's so unfortunate. Well, they don't smell yet. They're not flowering yet, but once they flower. Uh, um... Then you put them on the other side of the room. Yeah. see, yeah, see how it works. Of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wonderful. What about you? What's, um, uh, what's fun that's been going on recently or something you're thinking yeah. about? Yeah. Um, so I've mentioned before that um, a friend of mine and I stream ourselves playing video games. Mm-hmm. Um, we have been doing this for five years now. In December, we hit our five year anniversary. Wow. Five years on yes. Twitch. Five years on Twitch, um, and we mostly play through his his um, channel, which is Maximander. Um, I, I say that because I only have like sixty followers, but I haven't. I, I, don't, I don't. We don't play on my uh, my channel as often. Um, but be- in part because we hit our five year anniversary, and in part because we are waiting for a game to come out at the end of next month, we're very excited about um, Final Fantasy VII Part Two. Um, we had this block of time where we wanted to play a game that we could like stop if we needed to. Okay. Um, and so we went back to our, our roots of gaming and are replaying one of the first games we ever played. Um, our, our like brand theming is all um, focused around Kingdom Hearts, mm. which is a series, a series of video games that has been coming out since the early 2000s. That was like a big part of both of our childhoods. Um, and we started streaming because we, when Kingdom Hearts 3 was coming out, uh, they put out this compilation of all of the different games in the series thus far, which you would think would be one and two. It was like seven games. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. some of them were like mobile games that they turned into movies because there was not enough content. Um, and so we were going to play through, and we did play through all of those. And a friend of ours from college was like, oh, stream it, I'll watch. And like thus began our so far five year endeavor. Um, but uh, but yeah, so like all of our branding and all of our like theme stuff is Kingdom Hearts related, and we have not played a Kingdom Hearts game in five years, and we are now going back and playing Kingdom Hearts Finally two. And it's been, it again, yeah, five years later. It's been real fun. Nostalgia, <laughs> nostalgia trip. Such nostalgia. Yes. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Well, if anybody <laughs> is interested, Lily and Max stream once a week at least, right? Twice a week, yeah. Twice a week. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. So you know, keep it keep it interesting. Record the pod. Record some Twitch. Do some job search. <laughs> Melt. Um, but yes, yeah, so I guess on that note, hopefully, sleep, and then do yeah, it over crossed. again. Yep, yeah. <laughs> eat some food. You know the the things. Yeah, um, exactly. A but uh, but yes. So on in that vein, um, I suppose we let's let's uh, let's get into it. So last episode we talked about um, I I am mid like full time job search for a full time job um, for a software engineering job, um, and so we 
talked last week about um, kind of the priorities that I'm coming taking into my job search. Um, and then so we were thinking about that and kind of what happens next with that and what the next part of the process is. And we wanted to talk a lot about some of like the red flags um, that are visible when you're job searching, but then also potentially in your own, like if you, if you have a job, um, if the company is changing or if you're just kind of feeling uncomfy with something and you're not quite sure what it is, um, kind of pinpointing and figuring out um, what might be a red flag for you, uh, mm -hmm. what, what might be making something uncomfortable for you. Um, that, and that may not be a red flag for someone else um, and that's fine. But um, yeah, just sort of thinking about, you know, we want, we, last time we were prioritizing what we do care about and it can be helpful um, to kind of come at it from the other way and feel like, okay, well, what do I not want? Yeah. I, I think about this as like um, minimums, like mm. I, my, I, I, I love um, aviation and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and, you know, planes and whatever, anything that flies. Um, but in general aviation, when, when you're flying as a pilot on your own, like just like doodling around, you usually have some personal minimums, which means like mm. the weather needs to be a certain type of way for me to feel safe flying today. Uh, you know, like winds or temperatures or, you know, thunderstorms in the area or something like that. Like I, I don't fly at night, um, those mm. types of things. Like you have your minimums that you won't fly. Um, and I like that kind of concept, that type of thinking of, as like a way to protect yourself um, here as well to so say like, uh, mm. these are my minimums. It's not like, you know, these, these are, these are no goes for me. Maybe somebody else feels comfortable with these, but they're no goes for me. Um, uh, in terms of like a company that I want to work at or, um, a job opportunity that I might be interested in for, um, uh, like somewhere where I'm interviewing. Um, and then I think we can also maybe Lily today, like weave in some green flags too, like the th oh, things yeah. that would be like a, wow, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. And but definitely it should be helpful for, for people who are searching for a job and people who are currently in a job to say, okay, does this job still meet my minimums or does it have some red flags that I'm not willing <laughs> to do anymore? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Apple, Apple did a thing. Right? I laughed yeah. at it. Um, it's not doing it for me. Or like, no. are you seeing? Yeah, no. no. Sorry for anyone wondering. Apple has in, introduced this thing with its, just it's, if it's videoing you, is that... The whole yeah, thing? so for some reason, um, Apple like pays attention to my hand gestures and like tries to do different things, um, different animations over my face if I make certain hand gestures. And I don't know how to turn that off, but I feel like I should uh, figure out how to turn that <laughs> off in the settings because it's starting to make hand gestures on the video right now, uh, hand <laughs> gesture animations. Mm -hmm. Could be a little distracting. <laughs> I, I remember finding out about it because someone like put a, a post out somewhere of like someone had they were like. To, like something something really bad like to uh like i don't know we lost two clients or something and it just didn't <laughs> not good not it was good. not the vibe not yeah. good no um yeah i wonder if i haven't updated something and maybe i shouldn't update something yeah maybe it's a uh, mac os or something like that it started doing mm -hmm. it for me yeah yeah um but wonderful all right so yeah do you want to Start us, start us off, Lily. You're the one that's actively okay. looking at a lot of companies right now this um, is true. as part of your job search, like places that you might potentially work. We talked a little bit about in the last episode about your ranking, a priority of things that you're looking for in a job. Um, but we didn't talk much about like what if you saw it in a job description or if you heard a recruiter from that company say it or the hiring manager say it would be something that would, you would go, uh, yikes. Nope. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I and I think that it really um, meshes with that prioritization of a lot of the things that I'm looking for, and and it, like I really like the that way of thinking about it of like these are my my no goes of like if if the pay scale for the job that I'm looking for is just truly below what I'm looking for, then that's just a no go of I'm not going to look at it anyways. It's not a red flag. It's just like this is not the right thing for me. It's not a fit. Um, yeah, it's just not a fit. So that is having that limiter is helpful for just kind of like flushing, flushing some of them out. Um, and occasionally if something catches my eye of like, um, I, uh, you talk a lot with your newsletter and we've talked a lot before as well, um, about like having a niche can be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Like if you're just like, I'm a, I just give me a job. I just need a job. I'll do whatever. Um, that is such a less appealing, um, potential hire for a company than someone who's like, I prior, like I focus on this stack, which happens to be your stack and I do X, Y, and Z and I do it really well. Um, then like you're going to hire that person between those two. So having a niche in this way that kind of can feel the inverse of like you're limiting yourself 
Um, but by narrowing that search, you actually um, give yourself a better chance of getting that job. Yeah. And it's the job you want more anyways. So like it works in your favor and the company's. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, um, I, I use the small fish, big pond, big fish, small pond kind of mm. way of thinking about it too. Right. Like if I say like, I'll take any job, then I am literally a tiny fish in a huge pond of possible competitors with me, yep. um, for that job. Whereas if I say something very specific, like, uh, you know, I work on healthcare software, I'm a Python developer, um, you know, something else, you know, I want to work mm -hmm. in New York, um, mm. you know, healthcare Python developer in New York. That's a pretty, like, that's an intersection that you're only competing mm -hmm. with a, a much smaller pool of potential people. Yeah. Definitely. And you can speak to it more. Like, you can speak to those things, um, which means that you have a better shot anyways. Uh, yeah. So definitely thinking about kind of all of these things and how to, how to utilize them to give myself the best opportunities. I am definitely a Python engineer. Um, and, like, I can do full stack with react and typescript um but like that is kind of where my focus is stack wise um but yes so i've got like the no goes and and like language isn't a no-go for me so I, I guess this is a part of it of like if if the language is like go <laughs> go or no go um you know like i'm not if it's not python that is is not a no-go for okay. me yep um it just means that like I probably won't get this job on interview because um, there's a lot of Python on my resume. Um, and also yeah. it might be practice, you know, like whatever, whatever. Not the a things. foregone conclusion. You won't get the job, but it's going to be more difficult. Yeah. 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 Um, and so I don't, and I like, I'm, I'm trying really hard not to like put a lot of pressure on myself because um, you're just going to get a lot of rejections and that's how this goes. Yeah, part um, of the process. Yep. But um Okay, well, so walk us through some red, red flags. flags. Some yes, sorry, things, some things that are no-goes. Yes. We've, we've... Um, so yeah, so for me, it, yes, thank you. It comes <laughs> back to my first priority of the work culture. I want to have a nice time at work. Um, and so the things that are actually my biggest red flags of like, I don't think I want to work at this company are, are probably not red flags for most or a lot of people at least. Um, because for me, it's words that like, like certain things, words and, and, and takes that um, are very common in job descriptions that mm. like toe the line sometimes of um, certain things have been shown to, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like de demoralize women and people people from historically excluded groups sure. from applying for jobs. Um, and that sort of things like, we're looking for a rock star. Uh, you know, like we're, mm. we're looking for someone who who's like the best, you know, like who mm -hmm. thinks that they're the best. And it's like, for most people of any situation, I feel like most people read that and they're like, gross. Um, or, or just like, you know, we all have imposter syndrome. We all also like have some humility and recognize that there are very, very talented, exceptional people all around us that we might be in that pool. But like, I don't, I don't look at my peers and think, yeah, I'm a rock star here. <laughs> like, I'm better than all of you. And I don't think that most people feel that way. Well, and I, I think maybe more on the nose for the work culture piece of it. I don't want to work with people yes. who think they are rock stars. Absolutely not. Um, I mean, it's, it's great to have a good self-esteem about your yes. value and worth and <laughs> what you provide to the company. But if you walk around thinking you're a rock star, um, that <laughs> tends to indicate to me that like the people on the team are going to be a little bit more difficult to collaborate with. Yeah. yeah. Rock stars are notoriously <laughs> difficult to collaborate with. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so there's definitely elements of that that I shy away from and that it can be useful, even if you are not from a historically excluded group, to be thinking about that. And I mean, A, just thinking about like, who does that mean I'm going to be working with? Um, but B, also thinking about from a place of privilege, like, oh, this, this, the, the people who are writing these job descriptions, um, that's kind of like a pretty easy baseline to hit of like the first thing you read when you Google, like, how do I make my job description? enticing to people from historically excluded groups. How do I like make, how do I make yeah. a job description that sounds equitable and, and enticing yeah. Yeah. and inclusive? Yeah. Um, and, and if they, they, like, they clearly didn't do that research. Um, yeah, that's so a red flag for a company. That's a red flag for a company. I would think I are for, for, I was gonna say, I would hope, but like for like, I, you know, that'd be a red flag for me. Um, but beyond that for me, I think, which is why I was like, this one might not be a red flag for everybody. Um, words that don't, that don't hit that mark, but are close enough where it's like, we are looking for a driven self-starter. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I don't want to work that hard. 
<laughs> I like it's this sort of thing of like I again like I am a competent engineer. I enjoy coding. I will work until the job. You know, like I'm gonna I'm gonna get the job done. Um, but I would like to enjoy my job. I'd like to enjoy my time. Like priority number one for me is Good the work at culture. Multitasking in a fast paced environment, like it's it sends the wrong <laughs> it sends the wrong yeah. impression. Yeah, it or, sends, it's, at least it sends the impression that I don't want to work there. Yeah, yeah, that the environment is going to be fast paced and multitasking and whatever. Yeah, and like I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be this, my like at my best in that environment. I'm not going to provide my best work um, in an environment that um, wants to take more from me than I want to give. I guess mm -hmm. um, versus like a, a, a mentor of mine who I've worked with a lot thrives off of that. Like if if his job is not overly demanding, he gets bored and he doesn't want to work there anymore. Um, so again, like a red flag for me might not be a red flag for someone else. Yeah, uh, that's one thing too. So you can suss out once you get on the phone with someone. At, a, mm -hmm. at the company too, because often I find that some like descriptions of the company or like just the bottom half of the job description is just pasted on by HR to every yes. single job description. You might end up talking with the hiring manager and saying like, so uh, can you give me an example of what a fast paced, uh, you know, environment <laughs> it, it looks like on in your organization and like what, you know, and they might be like, oh, no, it's whatever. Or like, yeah, we all work together and it's very collaborative or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. It's, and it's definitely, again, like, it's so hard to gauge work culture in particular because it's so specific team to team and everybody is different. So what might be unpleasant for one person might be really great for someone else. So even if you have someone in the room being very honest with you about their experience of what the environment is like, um, you might experience it very differently. So it's really hard to tell, like, what, what the work culture is going to be. Um, but a few things that I have found in just this most recent round of interviewing, or not interviewing, I haven't interviewed yet, um, of looking at job descriptions. Um, like one company, I actually, um, a recruiter reached out to me and sent me this job description. I actually like messaged back this recruiter and was like, hey, I don't know if, um, I was like, this is not a job for me, I don't think. Um, and I don't know if this company is like struggling to to uh, get this role filled, but uh, like here are a couple things that um, stood out to me as things that make me feel like this is not a good place for me. Um, and one of them was that rather than having um, in their like perks description, anything about like growth or the kind of like the the tertiary things on on my list of like stuff that I care about, like growth, mentorship, learning. Um, they they had a perk that was they didn't have any of those perks, and then they had a perk that was like six swag. Um, and I was like, I really I really don't care about the swag. <laughs> yeah. And if like if they want someone that cares about the swag, I'm not the person for yeah, the that's job. Yeah, that's not a perk. So no, so it was a, it was an interesting thing, but like figuring out for yourself as well, you know, there's companies where it's like, oh yeah, like you get flown to an offsite twice a year. Like, is that a thing you want to prioritize? Cause like totally could be like all these, all these different things, but it's been very interesting, like honing in on my set of red flags. Yeah. Okay, let's... A lot of them are just like, and, and again, like, and the flip side of them are, there's a lot of green flags of like, there was one job description um, that came up where there was a little, they were like, you don't have to write a cover letter, but here's like, why do you want to work here? You know, like 200 words. Um, and I wrote in and I was like, this job description is so good. Like you, the, the care that you put into this job description of like talking about transparency and collaboration and a lot of things that, that uh, similarly to Bennett, what you were saying, of like a lot of stuff can be copy pasted, but this was really clearly not. Uh, like, like the person who wrote this JD job description really wanted you to get a sense of what the people here care about. Um, and it was really clear and really inviting. It was the opposite of, of the like, oh, this might not be for me. It, it was like, shit, like I would really like to work here. I really want this interview. Um, and so like sometimes I, I almost want to say like, sometimes it's just vibe, <laughs> but sometimes it is just vibe. Like if, if a person can, uh, describe a situation well enough that you're like, oh, I'm, I really feel like I'm getting a sense of what it would be like to work here. Um, mm then that in and of itself can be a green flag because that shows communication skills yeah. and care. For sure. For sure. Okay. We're getting a little late in the episode. So I want to make, yes. uh, maybe we've already lost the people who already have a job and uh, aren't reading job <laughs> descriptions every day. Um, but I do want to like zoom out. You could out be writing job descriptions. Yeah. And couch this in like a larger conversation, yes. right? About like, yes, you could be writing job descriptions. That's totally true. Great point, Lily. Like this, mm -hmm. this stuff matters. People read these mm -hmm. and like really... It, it attracts the people that you write it for. Um, mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, so many of these things we talked about, about like trying to infer work culture from a job description or from a conversation with a hiring manager or recruiter. Um, 
but one benefit of actually working at the place is you get to realize you you do see what the work culture is like and there may be moments where the things we just discussed um about being a rock star for instance uh mm -hmm. really apply to your team like your team wants rock stars um who are lone wolves who go out and like are coding gods and just like go and solve problems on their own all day and whether or not that's a no-go for you is a very personal decision but for me that would be a no-go right and i would mm -hmm. realize like if, uh, great now i get another thumbs up but like <laughs> i it's um it would be a no-go to be on a team of rock stars for me and that might be a moment where i go oh wait what am i doing here like you know what i mean like mm -hmm. and not that i need to quit my job tomorrow but that i need an exit plan um, something that I can do to switch to a different job, uh, find a different possibility for me. So Yeah. Or as, as you talk about a lot and that I think we're going to talk about more in a later episode, um, like taking that moment to potentially try to influence the culture. If you do want to stay, or if you, if you see the culture changing around you, um, trying to influence that in a direction that, that remains sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. Like culture is not static. So let's remember like nope. the thing that you liked about the company a year ago and your preferences aren't static. So the thing mm -hmm. you liked about the company a year ago might now be a thing you dislike about the company or the thing might've changed and now it no longer applies. Um, and so like you really got to check in regularly just to see about these types of things and see if the company is still a good fit for you. It's not having been at a company for a while is not a good enough reason to continue to be at that company, right? So Absolutely not. Yeah. Sunken cost fallacy, right? Yeah. Exactly. A avoiding the job search <laughs> is not always a good enough reason <laughs> to stay where you are. <laughs> yeah, despite what Lily said last episode about trying to never do this again. <laughs> I will mm. be doing this again. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, but, I don't, I don't know if we got through like a ton of red flags, but I thought we, I think we got through some good red flags and just generally yeah. how we think about minimum snow goes for, I think so. for, yeah, for companies. I think that was a good, absolutely. Do you have a couple of red flags to mm. list, list off at the end here? Yeah. It's things about communication and collaboration, the general tone, um, mm. the work pace, um, mm. feeling like, uh, we're always under deadline or everything's a fire, um, mm. is problematic for me. Um, yeah, I think you yeah, made some great points about sustainable. diversity and inclusion too. Like, it, like it's one thing to say that you value DEI as a company. It's another thing to actually see women and people of color um, on your team yeah. as an engineer and at all layers of yeah. leadership. Yeah, yeah. And at all layers of leadership. Yeah. yeah, and I think I think exactly what you just said of like like stress for most for a lot of people at least stress is unsustainable. Mm -hmm. um, so if a situation is constant fires or just like constant pace that is not sustainable for most people um, and and not a place that I want to work and also not necessary. I feel like that gets lost so often, but like this really green flag job description, like it made it very clear that it was just like, we don't want you to not like being here. Yeah, you don't have not to not like your job. It's stressful. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's great. All right, well, here's hoping that uh, everyone's job is only as stressful as you would like it to be <laughs> <laughs> and your job search as well. Um, and I think that that brings us to the end of the episode. Yeah. I think we, we did it. Thanks thank you, for, thank sharing, you for... for sharing yeah. your red flags and your findings from the discussion, from the, from the thank job you. descriptions. And uh, we'll and, see everybody uh, yeah, in the next always, one. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a good week. Bye.